accent down perfect. It was a sort of a hillbilly southern accent. And she knew how to speak it so easily, she rehearsed it. And when they sent drawings to us for that, a show costume, she said, I do like that if we can just, you know, make it look real. I suddenly realized that she was a wonderful girl with great, imaginative, funny, she was a comedian, she was any kind of a serious actress that she wanted her to be. And she was not at all dumb. She was brilliant. She was just uneducated. When I first heard that I'd be working with Marilyn Monroe on Bus Stop, my expectations was to be working with a musical comedy actress. Marilyn had learned a tremendous dramatic and comedy technique uh, that didn't uh, depend just on her personality, but she could really get into a character and play it with great truth as well as humor. The last scene in Bus Stop, the last love scene, as a matter of fact, wasn't the last scene, but the last love scene, where we come together and we have that kiss when I very seriously say to her, I sure wish you were coming back to the ranch with me, uh, Cherry. I wish that more than anything in the world, and she accepts my proposal. That scene was shot in an extreme close-up I've been thinking about them other fellas, Cherry. And, uh, well, what I mean is, I like you the way you are, so what do I care how you got that way? me. Now remember that scene in particular because Josh Logan, the director, wanted that extreme close-up and the cinematographer said you can't do that on CinemaScope because it's too startling to the audience. And Logan said, I don't care. As long as you can get it in focus, I want it. They set it up and the cinematographer said, the camera's cutting off the top of Don's head. It won't work. And Marilyn said that wonderful, famous line, which she actually said and was not a publicist's dream. She said, so what? The audience knows Don has a top to his head. It's been established. <laughs> I still wish you was going back to the ranch with me more than anything I know. You do? Yeah, I do. Well, I'd go anywhere in the world with you now. And she was just Sherry, that's all. She was so wonderful. I finally realized that I had a chance of working with the greatest artist I'd ever worked with in my life. And it was Marilyn Monroe. I couldn't believe it. Critics acknowledged Marilyn's Cherie as the finest performance of her career. But Hollywood ignored her achievement failing even to nominate her for an Academy Award. Everyone is interested in your plans and that big question. Now, can you tell us where and when? It was 1956, and the improbable was about to take place. Uh, I'm not going to say where we will be married for just that reason, because uh, I think it's time enough for everybody to know when it happens and to leave us with a little bit of peace until it happens. Arthur Miller's parents welcomed her, and Marilyn appeared once more to have found her family. Just days after their marriage, Marilyn and her new husband left for England to begin her company's second production. One day, Milton Green told me that he was going to make a picture with the prince and the showgirl, and Lawrence Olivier was going to play the prince and direct and Marilyn Monroe was going to play opposite him. What do you think of that idea? I said, that's the most exciting combination since black and white. My dear, wouldn't you be more comfortable on the sofa? You could put your feet up there and rest. Oh, no, thank you. I think I'll stay right where I am. Just as you please. <laughs> My 
My dear, it was so good of you to come and see me here tonight. You said that before. Did I? That is a beautiful dress. You said that before, too. <laughs> what does it matter? What are words? Where deeds can say so much more. <laughs> That's just terrible. What is terrible? That performance of yours. Dear, I do not altogether understand you, Miss Marina. Oh, now, don't pull the Grand Duke with me. You made a pass and I turned it down. That's all that happened. We can still be friendly. Marilyn, now in her 30s, was hailed by critics as a superb comedian. She would receive Italy's David Di Donatello Award as Best Foreign Actress of 1958, as well as the French Crystal Star. I would like to say that I'm fully confident that in the end my husband will win this case. Americans were again amazed. Marilyn Monroe was speaking out in support of her husband's refusal to name suspected communists before a congressional committee. Her courage only enhanced her role as beloved sex goddess. The acclaim for Marilyn's unique comedic talent reached its peak with...